All right, this video is going to cover uh, three different types of common lung tumors. And the first one we're going to start with is the pulmonary adenocarcinoma. And so the pulmonary adenocarcinoma at low power is composed of glands. Uh, you can see in this tumor, the normal architecture of the lung has largely been replaced uh, by this tumor. And so you can see normal lung here and little balls of tumor spreading into the lung. And as you move towards the center of the tumor, you will notice that these uh, balls of tumor become more frequent and then the carcinoma begins to invade into the lung parenchyma itself. Um, pulmonary adenocarcinomas are more common in women and often in non-smokers, which is kind of counterintuitive to the way you normally think about it. They're usually peripheral in location, meaning that they're right underneath the uh, pleura of the lung. and uh, they can metastasize a little bit earlier than your squamous cell carcinomas do. They tend to to grow a little bit slower but spread earlier. Uh, they're usually associated with KRAS mutations. So we'll go down and take a closer look. Uh, but the defining characteristic of a adenocarcinoma is that the tumor is composed of these malignant glands. And you can see even here, kind of at relatively low power, you have very prominent nuclei and lots of pleomorphism. Uh, the cells that make it up are rather ugly. This is in contrast to the squamous cell carcinoma, uh, which you can see here. And there's a lot of different contrasting elements between these two tumors. Squamous cell carcinomas uh, are typically more common in men associated with smoking and more centrally located. And when you think about it, that actually kind of makes sense because where does most of the smoke irritate the lungs? Well, it's going to be central within the uh, main stem bronchi and the larynx. Uh, just like these people have higher uh, rates of mouth cancer, they also have higher rates of laryngeal cancer and uh, centrally based squamous cell lung carcinoma. These carcinomas are notable because they go through a sequence that we'll talk about numerous times throughout the year, and that's the metaplasia dysplasia carcinoma sequence. Uh, meaning that initially squamous metaplasia of the uh, airways occurs, then dysplasia, and then eventually carcinoma uh, involving the lungs. These tumors are associated with p53 mutations. Um, some of the histologic features that are very helpful in determining these tumors are the presence of sheets of keratinocytes, which is exactly what you're seeing here. Uh, notice that there are no gland formations uh, in this. There's these little punched out spaces, but these are usually dead and dying cells that become necrotic. And indeed, these pockets of necrosis are actually a very helpful feature in determining whether a tumor is a squamous cell carcinoma or an adenocarcinoma. Finally, the last tumor we have here is a neuroendocrine carcinoma. And histologically, these are very characteristic lesions. So they often have what we call a trabecular or nested appearance. And when we say trabecular, we mean that the tumor grows in little purple cords like this, separated by kind of a hyalinized pink stroma. And you can see that this tumor is very different looking than the previous ones. Um, this is a common finding in a carcinoid tumor. Uh, we also call these things well-differentiated neuroendocrine carcinomas. Um, and there are different um, types of these tumors. Uh, there's also atypical carcinoids, uh, which usually have increased mitoses and necrosis, ranging all the way up to small cell carcinoma, which is the most malignant variant of these, uh, which is a high-grade neuroendocrine carcinoma. But the tumor that you're seeing now on the screen is actually one of the well-differentiated neuroendocrine carcinomas, or a carcinoid tumor. And one thing that we talk about with these tumors, here's an area that is displaying the nested appearance where you get small little islands of the cells. Uh, additionally, these tumors are often said to have what we call salt and pepper uh, nuclei. And what that means is that when you go to really high power and you look at the nuclei in these tumors, uh, they're stippled, meaning that you have areas of light staining and areas of dark staining, and, and that's what gives us the salt and pepper name. So whenever a pathologist goes down to high power and sees this alternating dark and light nucleus like this, that's what we would call salt and pepper, and that makes us think of a carcinoid tumor or a neuroendocrine carcinoma. And these can happen anywhere in the body. One of the most common sites is the lungs, but they also, also often happen in the GI tract. 
So in summary, this is three different types of lung carcinomas that you will commonly encounter in your practice and on test.